Hello everyone, and welcome to Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church on this second Sunday of Easter, April 19th, 2020. We are so glad that you have come and joined with us together in this virtual worship. My name is Sister Tashina, and along with Pastor Renee, Pastor Bryce, and all the musical talents of Joe and Corianne and our amazing community at Shepherd, we are here once again to lead you in worship. We're so glad that you've joined us. There are a lot of things that you need to know as we continue in this not-so-in-person um, manner of meeting and worshiping together. There will be a lot of communication continuing your way. However, there's a few things that we want to make sure that you know right now. First of all, in our continued efforts to flatten the curve of the COVID-19 spread and in heeding the direction of Governor Waltz, our building will remain closed until at least May 4th. Secondly, this means that we will continue to worship and gather in a virtual way. Uh, for the chance to gather in any way right now is truly a blessing. Thirdly, we want you to stay tuned. We will continue to make announcements about any and all gatherings through our weekly e-news, our Facebook and website, which you can find at SOH sv.org. For any and all up-to-date information, including how to access links and resources, please check out the COVID-19 update page on our website. Again, that is sohsv.org. At 11 a.m. this morning, April 19th, we will be gathering remotely for a virtual coffee and donut time via Zoom. It will be a BYOD Bring your own donut and coffee. A link was sent out yesterday to all who receive our emails, and it can also be accessed via our closed Facebook group. A uh, special note that Zoom links will no longer be posted in public spaces due to safety concerns, and you're welcome to reach out with any questions that you have in that regard. We really do hope that you join us for our donut and coffee time. It is truly a blast. Finally, if you hear nothing else this morning, know, dear siblings in Christ, that you are loved. Now, I invite you to take a deep breath in, let it out, and prepare your hearts for worship. Let us pray. Holy God, our bringer of peace, 
you break boundaries to show us love. We turn away from your call and ignore our neighbors to focus inward. In the midst of our chaos, our mourning, our pain, you show up every time. Help us to see you even though your physical presence does not appear. We ask that you would bring that peace again and again to us now. Calm our hearts and still our minds so that we may better see your will for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the children's message. I'm glad you're here today. I'm wondering if you have learned anything hard in this time when you're on quarantine. And I was thinking about that. And I remember a time when something I learned something that was really hard. And it was how to tie my shoes. So my mom helped me understand that I made uh, bunny loops and I could make uh, bunny loops and I could get my uh, shoes tied. But it wouldn't matter how many times I tried, I'd try and try and try, I'd get these knots in there. And I was wondering that maybe that's kind of how it feels right now, that we're trying and trying and trying, and there seems to be a lot of knots in our lives. Now, whether those knots are um, of worry because you can't see your friends or wondering why you haven't been able to see your grandparents or and are, is your family gonna be okay? And all these knots show up and they uh, make life hard. And in our gospel story that Sister Tashina is going to read for us, the disciples also had lots of knots in their life. Jesus had died and had risen. Uh, the ladies had come back from the tomb and said, he has risen. But they just, they hadn't seen him yet. And, and they were all full of these knots of worry and what was going to happen to them and their families. And they were behind like a bunch of locked doors on an inside room, and they were full of knots. And you know what Jesus does? He shows up right through all those locked doors. Nothing can stop Jesus. And he brings this amazing um, word, these amazing words of gift to them. So he comes through all those locked doors right in the middle of all their knots, and he says, peace be with you. And when he says that, the disciples are so excited, it's almost as if all their knots just go away. And Jesus has brought this peace to them that is just beyond their understanding. Even in the midst of all the other knots in their lives, Jesus helps unknot those knots. And he does the same thing for us. When we're in this time of, of hard things and, and our lives are full of knots and worry, he also comes to us with these words of peace be with you. And then after we get that gift, we can pass it on to other people. And then this gift of peace just gets passed on and passed on and it is a wonderful thing. So remember when your life is full of knots that Jesus comes to you with the words of peace be with you. Will you join me in prayer please? Holy God, we thank you for the words you brought to the disciples. And we ask that you bring those same words to us. Peace be with us this morning and in our days and weeks ahead. And may we help share those words of peace with other people. Holy God, make this so. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, Verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here in my, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace be with you, dear people. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Dear God, we thank you for this day, for the opportunity to worship together even when apart. And we pray that you open our hearts and minds to what you have in store for us. May these words be ever pleasing to your ears. In your holy name we pray, amen. Well, happy Easter, everyone. <laughs> it's just getting crazy, doesn't it? Easter. We are in the season of Easter. It's a time when life is to be celebrated, and it's a time of resurrection, it's of newness and hope. Yet, it almost doesn't feel real, does it? Almost like Lent isn't quite over yet. Lent being the season leading up to Easter where we spend our time recognizing the brokenness of humanity and pulling back the layers of ourselves to find the, those raw pieces where we are disconnected from God. Not the most fun season of the church year. And it feels like we're still a little bit in that space. Like Easter is something yet to come, something to look forward to. Or that the Alleluia moment, the rejoicing, has somehow passed us by. And it, thinking about that this past week, um, it makes me it makes me ponder some of our text in that first Easter. You see our gospel text today, we find ourselves right there. Merely verses after the resurrection and Jesus' appearance to Mary, we find the disciples behind locked doors, sequestered from everyone in fear of the unknown, in fear of those outside their doors. Kind of an eerily familiar feeling, um, you might think, as I stand here preaching to you from my basement in a global pandemic, as you are all participating in this worship somewhere in your own homes. Yet Jesus shows up. It is in that space behind those closed doors where the disciples saw Jesus. He showed up and says, peace be with you. Jesus shows up. Life doesn't always seem to follow our church calendar. Putting the highs and lows in order of the seasons of joy and preparation 
or contemplation, but Jesus still shows up. Jesus always shows up. At the beginning of the Gospel of John, it states that there is a light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Fear and dread and unknown, those things are always there. They fill our lives and our worlds, and sometimes they're more precedent than others. But the darkness does not overcome that light. Hope and the life that comes in the promise of Jesus' resurrection is always there, even if we don't see it. And we are a resurrection people. We live and lean into that hope as the people of God. Jesus shows up to bring peace. Even when we're not ready, even when we don't think it's possible, Jesus shows up through masks being made for strangers, through cards and phone calls to check in and say hello. Jesus shows up in Zoom calls and sidewalk chalk messages and children's sermons in our pastor's homes and little ones getting excited to help with the dishes. Jesus shows up in fill in the blank for yourself right there. These alleluias. These little celebrations of life and resurrection and hope are something we in confirmation call God moments. And on a regular basis, we try to point them out. This is where I saw God this week. Where are your God moments today? And then there are times when those God moments, those little alleluias, are harder to see. Or we feel like we've missed them altogether. Kind of like poor Thomas in our text. See, our scripture text today is often known as the Doubting Thomas text. And poor Thomas. He kind of gets a bad rap if you ask me. I like to think of him more as fact-finding Thomas or skeptical Thomas, as a friend said to me this week. I like that. Throughout Thomas' story in this gospel, he is the one who is willing to die with Jesus, to die for Jesus, when they go to Lazarus' tomb. And when Jesus is telling them about what they are to do, he was the one asking questions. He wants to get things right. He wants to know the facts and the rules. He's ready to do it. And I can relate to those facts and rules for any of you, though, who know me. <laughs> but where was Thomas when Jesus showed up? In the home with the disciples behind those closed doors on that first night? The truth is we don't know. Other than the fact that he wasn't there. Maybe he went out to get groceries. However, when he arrives, Back at home, they tell him about the biggest God moment that he missed out on. Talk about FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. Well, Thomas missed out. And then Thomas simply asks, now he kind of desires or longs for the same thing that Jesus gave to the other disciples. You see, they didn't rejoice in the fact that the Lord was there until Jesus showed him his hands and his side. Yet it's Thomas that gets the bad rap. I mean, I'd be upset if I were Thomas too. How do I do this? How do I know how to do this Christ following resurrection believing stuff if I don't have the facts right? What do you mean you saw him? The world is crazy out there. 
what if I didn't have my God moment? And then Jesus shows up and says, peace be with you. The disciples waited around in their house for a whole week. I mean, what were they doing, right? Jesus said, as I, my father sent me, so I send you. And they hung out. I guess I know what it's like to sit at home for a long time, but I wonder why they did so. What was their reasoning? And maybe that fear was still present, even after seeing Jesus in the flesh. And I think it's okay. Actually, I know that it's okay. Your feelings, you can feel them, and that's okay. You can feel them at the same time as seeing God moments. And even though they waited around, Jesus used that because Jesus showed up and said, peace be with you. No chastising, no blaming. And then Jesus speaks one-on-one -on -one with Thomas. And I think it's safe to say that we all at times yearn for that, that little bit of one-on-one -on -one with Jesus, right? Our own personal mini Easter Alleluia explosion. <laughs> In this text, it shows us that yes, God's love is for us within the communal being as the whole body of Christ. Jesus shows up for the disciples, but God's love is also for us as individuals. Jesus showed up for Thomas. This text reminds us of how God's love is so vast and so beyond our own comprehension that it is both for all of us and just for you and just for me. Even when that math doesn't seem to add up. <laughs> Jesus shows up offering you peace in your days, peace in your hearts, peace in the chaos and hope even in the most difficult times even when Easter still feels like Lent and so dear siblings in Christ where are your God moments in these days and weeks and this time I would love to hear about them. Share them. Send them. Tell us about them. I look forward to knowing your God moments. Now, may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in this day and always. Know that you are loved. Amen. Bring many 
Let us confess our faith with Christians around the world using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we pray for the people of God in all times and places, in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of unity, we shut the door on things that are different from us when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth, we do harm to what you have given us. Inspire all to care for the world that you have made so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for those who live without a homeland or a place of safety. We pray that gener generous nations would offer refuge and a place for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, you listen to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those who are isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illnesses, chronic suffering, grief, physical distance, and all who else are in need. Today we pray especially for Marie, Patrick, Dave, Ada, Al, Michael, Jean, Roger, Amy, Margaret, Gail, Lydia, Kathy, Nancy, Adele, Zania, Peggy, Gwen, Ralph, Rose, Elaine, Jerry, Mary, Virginia, Betty, Joel, Steve, Phil, Tom and Sarah, Kendra, Dave, the brothers of Laura Marks, 
Dan, and Arnie. Uplift them, care for them, and love on them, God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for nations in the midst of crisis during this global pandemic. Guide the nation's leaders to make the best decisions and show them the most accurate information. Help us to trust in the doctors and scientists who understand this better than we do. Help us to prioritize lives over the economy, even if it hurts our own bottom lines. Help us to make the hard choices when the easier ones are just that, easy. And walk with us each and every step of the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for our ministry partners, for our partner congregation in Kitamali, Tanzania, that they might find peace in this time of trial, that your light would continue to shine on them just as it always has. And we pray for open hands in the midway and Ralph Reader, that you would grant them the resources that they need to continue to feed your beloveds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we pray for all who you we pray into your eternal care. Through your child and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Remember us, God, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. friends. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May our Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May our creator look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the creator, the redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. And beloveds, as you go from this time, may you go in peace and display that peace to all that you would encounter. Thanks be to God.